since the finals ended, and here's the regular season opener. I'm a triple double in his debut. Big play, Jimmy. Will it count? Run, buddy, run! Jason Tatum puts Boston on top. I'm the latest in my city. Tis the season. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take on this Christmas Eve. Good morning, Kendrick Perkins. Good morning, Max Kellerman. How we doing? Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, Molly? See if I'm good. I'm see in, if I'm I can't wipe that smile off of we... Kendrick Perkins' face in the next few minutes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he might be more like the no. Greek. But guys, we had a. a a full slate of NBA action. Let's dive right into it. The Celtics beating the Bucks by one point. Max, do you think the Celtics are definitely better than Milwaukee? Oh, they're not definitely better. They were barely better last night. It's not like Tatum called glass. Let's be honest. You know that was there was some luck involved in that. It was he Tatum is a fantastic player, but he was aided a little bit by luck, and it was a tough game. I'll say this. The Celtics, who I thought, I'm not thinking about them in the Eastern Conference Finals, they, they definitely have chances if Jalen Brown is really, like, basically as good as Jason Tatum or thereabouts, right? But you can't say they're definitely better than Buc the Bucs after one game. No, w listen, what have the Bucs been missing, right? A guy like Drew Holiday, according to Kendrick Perkins, well, guess what? They got a guy like Drew Holiday now. And they got Middleton. And they got the Freak. No, and by the way, and they got Lopez. And they can play... Uh, well, they can't play five out quite like they used to, but they can still do it, and they have another playmaker who you trust under pressure in Drew Holiday. No, you can be impressed with the Celtics, sure, but to say that after last night they're definitely better than the Bucks when it comes down to the last possession, and then even after that sort of lucky three-pointer, Giannis had to miss a free throw for it not to go into overtime. No way you can say the Celtics are definitely better than the Bucks after last night. Yes, you can, Max. And, and, and if you watch the game, the Celtics built up a 17-point lead, I believe it was. And when you look at the Celtic lineup, first of all, I'm not taking anything away from the Milwaukee Bucks. I think Drew Holiday was a great addition to the Milwaukee Bucks. But let's look at the additions that the Boston Celtics made this offseason. Getting a guy like Jeff Teague to provide that offensive uh, firepower off the bench. Getting a guy like Tristan Thompson, a center that they have been missing. And now that you have Kimball Walker being out, and now Jalen Brown, who we who tore up the bubble last year in the playoffs, one of the best two-way guys in the league today, is now getting a chance to prove himself and show the world that he should be considered a star. He's an all-star caliber player. He should have made it last year. Think about what the Celtics did last night. Two, they had two guys in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who had 30 points apiece in their debut. The first time ever in Celtic history. The sky's the limit for the Boston Celtics. They're a better team than the Bucks, And they were missing Kimball Walker, that one of their all-stars. So when you look at them, they have a guy like Grant Williams who could come in and play the three, four, or five who's an underrated defender. You have Marcus Smart. I don't want to have to ha deal with Marcus Smart, one of the best defenders in the league. If you see Marcus Smart uh, in a fight with a bear, you better help the bear because Marcus Smart is just that difficult to, in, in a matchup problem for us, just taking charges, getting uh, uh, extra possessions. So when you look at the complete roster of the Boston Celtics, they're deeper than the Bucks. They're better coached than the Bucs. One could say that Brad Stevens is a better coach than Mike Budenholzer. So to me, it's not, a, it's not even a question. After watching the game last night without Kimball Walker, the Boston Celtics are the better ball team. Well, I don't know. Listen, it, the, the knock against Budenholzer, it rightfully so, is in the playoffs. But in the regular season, like, and, and by the way, Drew Holiday should help there. 
Really, they did not have that second real playmaker who would do it under pressure, especially when Giannis plays like a big under pressure. But Budenholzer, it was the same thing in Atlanta. 60 wins, and they fell flat in the playoffs, but they didn't have a superstar. And then since then, with the Bucs, they're basically a 60-win team every year. Now they do have a superstar, but they didn't have that real Robin to pair with them. I'm not sure that Drew Holiday is good enough to be that Robin, but you are. You made the argument here on this show the other day that Drew Holiday could be that dude. So now you look at the Bucs and you say, this is basically a 60-win team. Did they get better or worse in the offseason? Well, according to you, Kendrick Perkins, they got better in the offseason. I'm not sleeping on the Celtics. Yeah, Everything they you say did. about the Celtics is right. Jeff Teague was an excellent, Jeff Teague's an excellent addition. And you're right, they were a little undersized at the five, and Tristan Thompson helps them there a bit. There's no question Jalen Brown's ascension helps. They don't have Kemba. Who knows what he'll be, when he'll get back, and what he'll be when he does get back. They don't have Gordon Hayward. He's gone. No, I mean, yeah, you could argue the Celtics got marginally better, but the Bucs, if anything, got a little better, and we're talking about the kingpins of the East, at least in the regular season. So why is it that the Celtics are definitely better again? But, but, but Max, now you're bringing up the regular season, but every time you have an argument, you talk about the playoffs that when it matters the most, right? When it matters the most. Brad Stevens has proven that he could at least take the Celtics to the conference finals. I believe he's done that three out of his three, three years since he's been the head coach of the Boston Celtics. And by the way, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are only going to get better. Jason Tatum is on the verge of reaching that superstar type status. Jalen Brown will be an all-star this year. And when Kimba gets back, it adds more depth. Jeff T could possibly be a six man of the year candidate. So when you look at their roster, Max, again, they are deeper. And look, don't even leave out your guy, Daniel Tice. He played phenomenal last night, an underrated guy who don't get enough yeah. credit. So the Celtics have the better team when it matters the most, right? That's look, what you always say, the playoffs. Forget the regular season. Look, but when it, when matters, it matters the when most, who's going to step up? That's what you always say. Well, look, the Celtics in this iteration, this iteration of the team, or at least under Brad Stevens, has never been to a finals. Now, the Bucs got knocked out even before then, but the, but the issue was so obvious with the Bucs, and I wouldn't just say, oh, it's Budenholzer, it's coaching. You have to look at Budenholzer, of course, but I wouldn't say it's that's the reason. The reason is they wall up against Giannis, and who else can go get their shot and run the offense at a good enough level and hit big shots under those circumstances that they can be a legitimate Robin? It's not really Middleton. Middleton is more than a 3 and D guy, but if he's oh. putting the ball on the floor, making decisions, try, like, doing all those things, that means the defense is winning, right? So they went and got Drew Holiday. They still got Brooke Lopez. They got a big who can defend the rim and bomb. They have Obviously, they have Giannis, who's the best player in the East, unless Durant is 100%. I, you're, you're acting as though a 60-win team who improved is certainly lesser than a team who, if anything, has underachieved for a variety of reasons in the last well, season or two. Well, Max, I'm only going off what you say, when it matters the most. And yes, it is on boot and hoser, because if you go into the playoffs, the playoffs are about adjustments. And when you go into the playoffs and you know teams are are going to wall up against Giannis in transition, and you know that they're going to take away his driving gaps, how about taking Giannis off the ball? How about moving Giannis to the five and having him going up and setting screens and rolling, being a live threat? How about establishing cross screens where Giannis is catching it on the low block in that area where they can't double? That's, on, that's coaching, Max. That's coaching. It's called making adjustments. It's called putting your players in position but to be Perth, successful. What's the real problem so I don't there? know what you're talking about. It's not the, because the real I problem just told was. You. What you talking I mean, about? coaching adjustments is legitimate. I'm, I respect that. I'm not arguing your basketball knowledge or at, as it especially as it applies to this situation. You can't coaching argue. Questions can't about argue. Budenholzer are are legitimate, right? However. What's the real issue on the Bucks in the last couple of years? Who did they need to step up and be that real crime partner for Giannis who was unable to do it? The truth is it was Bledsoe in the playoffs. 
Bledsoe had, you know, his his regular okay. season performance. The question was, would that be good enough? It was not, and it got worse in the playoffs. And the whole point of replacing Bledsoe with Drew Holiday is they believe they identified a guy who can do that. So that actually addresses the playoff concerns, at least to an extent. The Bogdanovich deal falling apart, obviously that would have also helped them. They didn't get that done. I expect them to do something by the deadline to bring in someone like that in the backcourt, right? But right now, the thing you're talking about is supposed to be addressed by swapping out Bledsoe for Drew Holiday. Well, well, Max, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Who has the better big three? Would you take Giannis, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton, or would you take Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Kimba Walker? That's a hell of a question. I think that because I don't know what I'm getting in Kemba, I don't know when he's going to be back or what mm -hmm. he'll be when he gets back. Maybe I, would, I might take the Bucks. I might take the Bucks. And, and now, and the only reason that's even an interesting question is because of the ascension of Jalen Brown. If Jalen Brown is really who we saw last night, if that's him, if the gap between Tatum and Jalen Brown is really very small, then we can revisit this later in the All season. Right. But right now, I'll take the Bucks. Mm. Yeah, just Kurt, keep you know tiptoeing. Boston? Keep tiptoeing around mm. the question. Who was that? My <laughs> I'll take KG. Okay. I'll take Paul Pierce.